Harkin first became involved with patient groups after a serious car crash left her in constant pain. But it was an event involving her father that led her to become a member of Leeds Involving People, or LIP as it's known, a charity dedicated to giving patients a voice on health and social care issues. My dad has dementia, he's um, living with dementia. He had um, a water infection and was admitted to the acute medical ward um, at the hospital. Um, because they did not understand the dementia, they put him into an isolation room. Um, they forgot to mention to the staff that he was in there, so there was no water, no the food wasn't going in. Um, nobody checked on him, they forgot to put him on the board. We went in at visiting time and dad was on the floor. Um, from that minute I realised that Dad couldn't be, he didn't have a voice of his own um, that would be listened to and I realised that I needed to step up. Um, he's always looked after me and, and I've decided that it was my turn. These involving people, Sham speaking. Hi, um, a friend told me about your organisation and I was kind of thinking I'd like to get involved in some way but I'm not really yeah. sure how it works. I think yeah, people I mean, feel of, um, um, sometimes that they have no say in how they're looked after and how their health is managed um, and I think it, LIP offers that opportunity to, for people to say you know what's going on, how they're treated and to be involved in the planning, to be involved in the services. I do actually have experience of mental health in my family. So All right, along yeah. those lines might be good. Yeah, so we've got a project called Together We Can. And they are um, experts by experience. Um, they are the people who know events. what it's like to live with long-term conditions. The people we work with uh, want to be involved in the, their shaping their own care pathways. And we, uh, and I believe that the people are able to do that with confidence, but with support. One of LIP's key roles is to provide training for its members, helping them build confidence to express their views and share their experiences. They've opened doors for me to, to have my voice heard and not just for my dad, I want to do it for a lot of people because I know there's a lot of people out there with dementia that aren't been listened to or they haven't got people to, to step up and talk for them. The charity has over 700 members, drawn from a diverse range of communities throughout Leeds. Many are from groups that LIP's partners, regulators, providers and other public bodies often find difficult to connect with. We have calls to say we haven't got service users or we've got the same old people attending, we'd like you to target Somalian communities, we'd like you to get women who have got pregnancy uh, plans in place. We can go to areas that other uh, professionals sometimes struggle with and have those honest conversations. In the charity's experience, only genuine collaboration between leaders and patients reaps benefits for both parties. There is a need to have a proper partnership as opposed to the citizen being looked as a difficult barrier and a block. We see people, citizens as assets that can aid your transformation, that can aid your delivery plans. I feel really passionate that the, that when things have been changed and been altered, um, services have been altered, that they really, really do need to listen. They really do need to listen to the, to the patients, to the residents, to the families, and take that into consideration and not just use it as a tick box and ask a question and, and do nothing about it. Um, I really feel passionate that you have to get the voices heard and they really do need to, to take notice. LIP has also discovered that health and social care organisations need to be flexible if they're to engage with patients fully. We need to be more accessible um, to people and to enable people to attend meetings, board meetings, to attend working groups. We've had to learn ourselves that having a meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning doesn't suit the needs of people who are on severe medication and the work pattern that the NHS leader has to have, has to have a component of not just doing the ward rounds with the executive board and the chairman. I think that there needs to be real, uh, truly engaging, off the piece conversations with citizens. He's had cancer, he's, had, uh, he's got diabetes, he's uh, bipolar. 
Through Leeds involving people, Sue Harkin was invited to open a national conference for the Care Quality Commission. She shared her experiences of her father's dementia with senior adult social care managers from all over England. When this, Alison had said at the end of it, is there any questions? I was thinking, please don't ask me, please don't ask me. And you know, they did ask questions and that the pride there, that felt amazing that they had, I knew they'd listen. I knew then that they really had listened because they did have questions um, for both myself and Lily, the member that had done it. So yeah, I was really proud. Thank you.